In this Redbubble tutorial, we'll be going over how to upload designs, create listings, and publish products to the Redbubble marketplace. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notifications bell, and to support the channel, feel free to hit the super thanks button as well. If you're looking to get into the print-on-demand e-commerce business, Redbubble is definitely one of the best places for beginners to start. They provide an easy-to-use platform that anyone can join and offer a wide variety of high-quality products that you can customize and sell on the Redbubble marketplace. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the entire process of uploading a new design to Redbubble products the right way. This will include how to write your titles and description, add tags, properly edit your products, adjust your prices, select your default product view, and more. But before you can publish products on Redbubble, you'll first have to create some awesome designs. If you're a beginner and need an easy way to create product designs fast, you should check out the tools available on Placeit. Placeit provides you with thousands of pre-made design templates that you can easily customize to create some amazing artwork for your Redbubble shop. Simply select a template and you'll be taken to the Placeit design editor where you can edit the text, adjust the colors, and even add or change the images. If you're a new seller and want to fill up your shop with quality designs fast, you should definitely check out Placeit. To access Placeit, you can head over to jasongandy.org or simply click the link in the video description. So now that I have a cool design to add to my products, let's head over to Redbubble and go over the upload process. So hopefully you've already signed up to Redbubble and created your shop by adding your graphics and setting up your artist profile. Now it's time to go through the process to properly upload designs and add new work. To get started, let's look up at the top right and click on our account icon. This should open up a drop down menu with various options to manage your account. Since we're going to be uploading a new design to Redbubble products, let's go down and click on the add new work button. This will take you to the page where you can add new work to your Redbubble shop by uploading a new design or copying an existing work. Since we want to upload a new design to Redbubble, we're going to choose the first option here. If you look under the upload new work button, you'll also see the file requirements. When uploading designs to Redbubble, it's recommended to use a high resolution JPEG, PNG, or GIF file with a minimum resolution of 1000 pixels. I've already created my design using Placeit, so let's click on the Upload New Work button. You can then find and open up the design that you want to add to Redbubble. Your image should then start uploading, and once it's finished, you should see a preview of it here. Underneath your design preview, you'll see a section here for your background color. Go ahead and select a default background color that you think works well with your design. Once you change your background color here, you can scroll down to your product previews and see that a majority of your products will now also be changed to the same color. Now that that's out the way, let's scroll back up to the top and go over how to add our listing details. On Redbubble, your listing details will include your title, your tags, and your description. Your title is actually the only field that's required, but we're going to be filling in all the information. But instead of filling everything out randomly, let's be a little strategic and start by doing a little keyword research. As you probably know, there are tons of ways to do keyword research out there, but since we'll be selling on the Redbubble marketplace, I like to start by doing my keyword research there. So before we add our listing details, let's open up a new tab and head over to the Redbubble homepage. From here, let's go up to the search bar and type in our main keyword. Since my design is about karate, I think I'll search for martial arts. This should pull up a page showing me all the products on Redbubble that are related to the keyword martial arts. The first thing you want to take a look at is the related keywords at the top of the page. These are all main keywords that people are looking for related to the keyword that you're searching for. Go ahead and go through the various categories here and write down any keywords that you think you can use. Personally, I like to create a keyword list to easily keep track of everything. This will come in super handy once we start filling in our design details. The next thing we want to take a look at are the designs that other artists have uploaded to Redbubble. If we click the drop down menu on the right hand side here, we can sort the search results on the page by the most relevant, trending, the newest, and the best selling. But for now, I'm going to stick with most relevant since these are the results that came up first with the keyword martial arts. When browsing the results, look for designs that are most similar to yours. Since the design I'm uploading is about karate, Let's check out this self-defense Kempo Karate Martial Arts shirt here. This will open up the product listing page where you can view all of the design information. The first thing we want to check out to find some good keywords is the product title. As you can see, 
This title here is filled with good keywords such as self-defense, kempo, karate, and martial arts. These are all good keywords to add to my keyword list. Keep in mind that you don't want to include product types in your keywords such as the word t-shirt. Product types are automatically added to titles by Redbubble. So now let's scroll down the page and go to the next section we need to check for keywords. Kinda in the middle of the page underneath the photos here, you should see the design description. I've noticed on Redbubble that most people use very short descriptions if they even use a description at all. Writing a good description filled with keywords that people are actually searching for could be a great way to get ahead of the competition in your niche. So go ahead and read over the description and add any keywords you think will be relevant. Once you're finished, we can then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and check out the product tags. This is probably the best place to research keywords to use for your listing. Remember that we don't want to include any product types, so the only section we need to take a look at is all product tags. Go ahead and check out the various tags that they're using for their design and add any tags that you can use to your keyword list. Before continuing, I recommend researching multiple products on Redbubble and filling up your list with good keywords. Once you're done, go ahead and head back over to the tab where we can finish creating our listing. By now, you should have a good keyword list that you can use to fill out your title, your tags, and your description. So let's start by filling in our design title. If I have text on my actual design, I'll typically add that to the title. When writing your title, make sure it accurately describes your design and also includes at least one or two of your main keywords. For length, your title should be between four to eight words. And as mentioned earlier, don't include any product types when writing your title, such as t-shirt, hoodie, or phone case. Product types will automatically be added to your listings after publishing. Once you finish with your title, you can then move on to your tags. Tags are pretty much like keywords that are used on Redbubble to help customers find your designs. You want to make sure to use relevant tags that people are actually searching for. You want to try to include at least 10 to 15 tags, all separated by commas. Since we've already done some keyword research on Redbubble, you should already have plenty of keywords that you can use for your tags. One thing to note is that you don't want to tag spam. Tag spamming is the use of inappropriate, irrelevant, or misleading tags. Redbubble likes to keep a good customer experience, and tag spamming could get you in a bit of trouble. Once you've added your tags, you can then move on to your description. Here's where you can describe your design in even more detail and try to get your audience excited about your products. As mentioned earlier, on Redbubble, most people put in a really short description if they use one at all. But for our listing, we're gonna fill in our description with some good descriptive text and also use our keyword list to add some good keywords and keyword phrases. When writing your description, make sure you be creative. You can describe your design, your target market, your art style, or any other relevant or interesting information. But as mentioned before, don't include any product types. Once you finish writing your title, your description, and adding your tags, you can then move down to your product previews. Here's where you can review and edit all the products that are available on Redbubble for you to sell. Each product type can be enabled or disabled using the button underneath the image here. But you never know what products Redbubble users are searching for, so I recommend enabling all the products that your design looks good on. I've also noticed on Redbubble that most people don't realize that each of these product categories may have multiple products. If we look under standard print clothing, for example, we can see that we currently have nine out of 12 products enabled. Under each product type, you wanna make sure to edit each product that you're planning to sell. So let's start by editing the products in the standard print clothing category by clicking the edit button here. This will pull up the editing menu where you can edit your design on the products. The first thing I like to do is select my default color. With a white color, you can't even see all the elements of my design so it makes it pretty hard to edit. So go ahead and try out various colors and find the one that your design looks best on. For my design, I'm gonna have to select a darker color because the words at the bottom are white which are hard to see on light colors. Underneath your colors, you also have a slider bar here that you can use to resize your design. And if you need to rearrange your design, you can also click and drag it on the template. To center your design either vertically or horizontally, you can use the two buttons here. One thing that tends to confuse a lot of people on Redbubble is the front or back options up top here. Many people seem to think this says front and back and try to print on both sides of the shirt. But on Redbubble, you can only print on one side of the shirt, and the option here is to select to either print on the front or the back of the shirt, not both. 
If you take a look here, you'll actually notice that you have two tabs that you can edit. If you click the second tab, you'll be taken to a menu where you can change your prices by adjusting your markup. You can also view all the products in this product category and select the specific ones that you want to enable. Underneath each product type, you can see the price range. With the 20% markup for t-shirts and hoodies, for example, the price range for these products will be $22.32 up to $44.77. But if we change our markup to 25%, you'll also notice the prices adjust as well. So go ahead and select all the products that you wish to enable and adjust the markups if needed. So we're pretty much done editing this product, but if you remember, standard print clothing actually contains 12 different products. So if we go back to the edit menu here and look under style, you should see a drop down menu that contains all the products that you have enabled. The standard print clothing category contains items such as an essential t-shirt, the tank top, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, and more. This can be a tedious process, but we're going to go through each product and edit our design on the template just like we did with the essential t-shirt. Once you're finished editing all the product styles, make sure you go down to the bottom here and click on the apply changes button. And voila, we're done editing our standard print clothing category. But as you can see, we still have many more to go. You want to edit the products in each category that you have enabled. So let's move on to the large print clothing. On some product categories, you may notice the menu here looks a bit different, but they pretty much have all the same options. Go ahead and resize and adjust your design, select your colors, select whether to print on the front or the back of the product. And if you click the settings tab here, you can select the products you want to enable and adjust your markup. For large print clothing, they currently have three products that are available. If we head back over to the first tab, we can select to edit the next product by going down to the section here. Simply click the left or right arrow and the next product should appear on the template. Just like the previous product, go ahead and resize and adjust your design if needed and select your default color. Once you're finished, make sure you go down to the bottom and click on apply changes. And we've just finished editing the products in our large print clothing category. This will take some time, but go ahead and go through every single product category that you have enabled and select your default colors and edit your design on each product. You'll notice that on many products, your design may be too big or not placed correctly, so make sure you go through every product and rearrange it as needed. Redbubble has tons of cool products, and you'd be surprised what people actually buy. So when adding your design to products, make sure you enable all the products that your design fits well with. Once you're finished, you can continue scrolling down, and you should see a section with the advanced products. The advanced products are a bit more tricky to create designs for as your design will show up on various parts of the item. Redbubble offers templates that you can download and use for these items, but we'll go over these in a later video. So if we continue scrolling down, we'll get to our publishing settings. Here's where you can select the final options and settings before publishing your design. At the top here, you can select two media options to add your design to if you wish. This includes photography, design and illustration, painting and mixed media, drawing, and digital art. Next, we have our collections section, which is where your collections will appear once you create some on Redbubble. Collections are groups of products that are sorted together to be displayed at the top of your Redbubble shop. Since I'm uploading my first design to this example shop, I don't have any collections yet, but I have a full video on collections if you want to learn more. Next, you can select the default product view for your shop. This will be the product that your design is displayed on whenever visitors come to your shop. Redbubble recommends using an optimized view, which is when Redbubble will select the product view based on sales and customer interest. But if you want to select the product yourself, simply click the drop down menu and you'll see a list of all the products that you can select from. When you look at the list, you may not have realized how many products are actually available on Redbubble. So as an example, I think I'll set my default product view as the active t-shirt. Now when customers visit my shop, my design should be displayed on the active t-shirt. The next option we have down here is to select who can view your work. If you're planning to sell on the Redbubble marketplace, you're going to want to make this public. And on the right hand side here, you're going to select whether or not your design contains mature content. This includes things like nudity or lingerie, adult language, violence, guns, alcohol, or any other unsavory material. I think my karate design is pretty harmless, so I'm going to select no. And finally, down at the bottom, you have to check to confirm that you have the rights to use your design. Make sure you're not stealing other people's work, using brand names or slogans, 
celebrity names, or any other design elements that you didn't create yourself or have the rights to use. So now that we've added our design details, edited our products, and selected our settings, let's go down to the bottom here and click on Save Work. And once your design finishes processing, it'll be added to your online shop and published to the Redbubble Marketplace. Keep in mind that it may take up to 15 minutes for your design to appear. But if we scroll down, we can see my title, my tags, my description, and all the products that I added my design to. Whatever products you enabled during the editing process should now be available in your shop. So to see how it looks, let's select the three dots here beside the classic t-shirt and click on view product page from the drop down menu. This should take me to my new listing page in my Redbubble shop. As you can see, the default color that's being displayed is the default color that I selected. So now let's head over to my shop homepage and see how my new design looks there. We selected the active t-shirt for the default product view, so that should be what's being displayed. So if we scroll down to my products, we can see that my active t-shirt with my new design is being displayed on my homepage. If you like, feel free to share your new product or your Redbubble shop on social media or anywhere else you like. Your audience will be able to click the link, go to your page, and make a purchase. So that's a quick overview of how to upload designs, create listings, and publish products to the Redbubble marketplace. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to support the channel, feel free to hit the super thanks button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.